Well, 1976, I was serving with 29 Commando Royal Artillery in uh, the Citadel in Plymouth. I was enjoying it. I was representing the British Army at football. So I was actually getting pretty much paid for playing football and doing what I wanted to do. But there came a point there where I decided that I needed to move on. And the next place for me would be 2-2 SAS. I had some friends there. I'd heard some stories. Uh, Playboy had spoken to me over the bank holiday uh, weekend in May. I went to Hereford for two days over the bank holiday. All we did was get um, plastered, ship phase, call it whatever you want. And I was introduced to some of the guys of B Squadron, where Dave was already a member. So that was pretty much the start. Um, I, because I was on training wing, of course, in between courses, there was a chance to get out and do something else. And I decided to do pre-selection training to see, you know, I knew what I was about because they told me roughly what it consists of. It's a challenge. For me, it was a challenge. However, I went up to the Brecon Beacons with a couple of lads from uh, two nine Stu and a couple of the other guys and we decided we'd spend a few days there maybe a week maybe longer depending on how it went um just training up on the hills penny found the highest point in the brecon beacons was a favorite and of course we didn't know that 1976 was going to be the hottest um year on record up until then and arguably up until now but a challenge is a challenge. Off we went, took our cars, packed it with the kit we thought we'd need, heavy equipment, no point in cheating, cheating yourself if you do. And we went to the base of Penny Fan, which is slightly different than it is these days. Um, across the road, actually, there used to be a cops, um, but you could park in there and you could leave your, um, your tent and stuff there. Four or five of us did that. Um, I had no idea. You know, I'd, I'd done the um, commando training with John McAleese, MM, and of course, um, he was in our broth as well. But when we started out on our treks, our routine, first of all, would be the night we got there, we made a routine for the following day. Did that, had a beer. And then we do that all the way depending on how long we wanted to stay there basically was the answer um it's a great place to be plenty of fresh air but extremely hot and with that becomes problems at the bottom of penny fan across the road more or less there's a, a reservoir totally empty with cracks in it um if you don't find water in a reservoir i'm afraid at the top of a hill you ain't going to find any water anyway so our routine was to try and take some water but in the main i used to carry cider as well not to cheat or anything but actually i can drink cider better than i can drink water and i'm the same to this day so that was my routine and i stuck to it um and one day day two three i can't remember we wandered up to the top of penny fan and then we were going to do the whole um everything up the top there yeah hot and of course there wasn't as many people wandering up and down the mountains in those days as there is now i think we wore the track in all those years ago and all the candidates before me and now it's like a little motorway up and down there but we have to start somewhere and that was it so you can't believe that when we got to the top of Penny Fan, up the other side of Penny Fan comes John McAleese, Brian, and a few of the other guys from 5-9 Commando. Unbeknown, no mobile phones, no contact whatsoever. They'd come down from our broth, and they were doing what they said was their pre-selection training. I thought, brilliant. We're all going to be on selection together. Remember, it's 1976. 
the days were long, they were hot. There's more sweat left up there than you even want to imagine. My DNA is on that hill, along with a lot of the other lads and John Mack, etc. But we made the training into fun. Work hard, play hard. This would put us in the great stead, if you like, for selection itself, if and when it came to it. I hadn't signed any paperwork to say I was going to go. What I was doing was testing myself to see if I had any chance. But nobody would believe how fit I was or how fit the rest of the lads were. So that was 1976. We did that, I can't remember exactly, probably 10, 12 days, maybe two weeks. And we thought, right, they had to go back up to 5'9", up in our bro. Remember, it's 1976. The days were long, they were hot. There's more sweat left up there than you even want to imagine. My DNA is on that hill, along with a lot of the other lads and John Mack, etc. But we made the training into fun. Work hard, play hard. This would put us in the great stead, if you like, for selection itself, if and when it came to it. I hadn't signed any paperwork to say I was going to go. What I was doing was testing myself to see if I had any chance. But nobody would believe how fit I was or how fit the rest of the lads were. So that was 1976. We did that, I can't remember exactly, probably 10, 12 days, maybe two weeks. And we thought, right, they had to go back up to 5'9", up in our broth. I had to get my backside back down to um, the Citadel in Plymouth. But during that time, I was actually convinced of myself that, you know what, I was training with the weights that were supposed to be carried and they're heavy. Obviously, the only thing I didn't have was a weapon. I just couldn't, even in them days, you couldn't wander around with a weapon. Um, but I thought long and hard. And it was not until I, I got back and decided I'd had a good conversation with John and the rest of the lads, as you can imagine. We've already built up a camaraderie um, and we all decided that we we're going to actually apply for 2-2 SAS selection. Remember, it's voluntary. Nobody can make you do it. You don't have to do it. You could give in at any point. And I'll be coming on to that in some of the next um, clips that we do on this channel. But the one thing I did think to myself is, if I do it, I want to pass. So on the pre-selection training we're doing now, right now, between ourselves, is heart and soul, effort, get the mind right. And I was just, when I got back to, to, to the Citadel, I spoke to uh, the senior ranks there and they were convinced I was having a great time playing football for the army, um, you know, doing everything you wanted to do, really. But I wasn't quite happy at doing that. Something was missing. So I decided to put in an application to join the SAS. Paperwork takes, it's not done in five minutes. You know, paperwork takes a bit of time. But with that, and the time came around fairly quickly, is I was told that if I wanted to do it, I would do Summer Selection 1977, which was okay. Um, it was only six months, seven months at the time, maybe eight months. So I had time to prepare everything I wanted and we all say the seven P's, prior planning and preparation, prevent piss poor performance. Well, I'm no different. I was enjoying being out with the commandos and training commandos 
and being the outdoor life that everybody, or certainly people I knew, would pay money to do. But I was getting paid to do it. And I could still play football. And I was single. So it allowed me a great scope to do what I wanted to do. It could be selfish in ways. Well, that's part of it. But I was determined that now I was told that I could do the summer selection. I had to mentally prepare myself. How did I do it? Um, I don't know. <laughs> but I did it. And I was ready to go. And trust me, over the Christmas, into the new year, yes, we were still doing commando courses, still enjoying it, still keeping fit, still playing football. But more than that, I was so looking forward to this challenge that was coming up. And there's nothing like a challenge, I can tell you that, that you know is going to be tough. We've already said that if it was going to be hotter than 1976, it was going to be hot. But I'd already prepared for that. I'd passed that one. But make no mistake, the challenge of 1977 was totally different. And my next video will be about 1977 selection, meeting up yet again with my old mate, John McAleese MM, and some of the other guys, and what happened on that particular selection prior to getting into 2-2 SAS. So what I'll say is, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Rusty Fermin SAS TV. And if you can keep an eye on future events and what's happening and SAS related subjects. Thank you. Who dares wins?